Welcome to the premiere show of Details Detroit. I'm your host, Karen Newman. So what exactly is Details Detroit? Simply put, we're the eyes and ears of the Motor City, offering you an insider's look at the fascinating people and places that make Motown great. We'll take you to places around town you've often wondered about or haven't seen before, even places you didn't know were right here. We'll show you what's hot and what's not, from great homes to fashion to food to cars and stars. On today's show, there's something for everyone, like finding out what Detroit is driving and where exactly are the best seats in the house. You'll learn what's behind a suburban landmark, get to know Detroit's other pro football team, plus our resident food expert, John Jonah, dishes up some great ideas and so much more, including a special celebrity guest. So sit back and get ready to take in all the details that Detroit has to offer. This is Detail Detroit. Temptations, miracles, and supremes. Ah, but what is a Vandella? Well, Martha Reeves named her famous Motown group after Van Dyke, the Detroit street, and Della Reese, the Detroit-born singer and actress. It's all in the details, Detroit. He's one of the Detroit area's favorite sons who made it big in Hollywood, yet he still remains true to his Michigan roots. He's a star of stage and screen, and in fact is a patron to many local actors trying to get their own start on stage with his Purple Rose Theater. Jeff Daniels is also known for his charity work through his yearly celebrity golf outing, and that's just where we caught up with him. I'll give you the details. So what exactly does NASCAR racing and golf have in common? Absolutely nothing, unless you're at the Jeff Daniels Celebrity Golf Jam. It's a little different from other outings. Uh, if you're a good golfer, we will do everything we can to screw you up. You know, this is the only outing that Nurse Ratchet approves of. Tiger Wood play Tigeris. <laughs> Who played this ball? That yours. Who Tiger Wood? Right. Hi, everybody. Ed Victor here talking with Survivor. Keith Famey. Keith, hey, thanks man, for taking going? some time out of your day. Are you kidding? I'm a golfer now. So that's great. <laughs> good things you get to do after Survivor. You become a golfer. Oh, I love it. And How's you know what? I'm not surviving very well on <laughs> golf either. Oh, we wouldn't watch it. You're doing okay. You made some putts. Uh, Keith, what's going on? Working on a new book for hopefully to be out in the winter. Why don't winter you tell time. us about it? Yes, I can cook rice, and so can you. Those are the details. How cool is this? <laughs> There's so many nuts here, it's almost like being at the hospital. It's a great turnout, and because there's no other tournament like it. I mean, we have something different on every hole. And, and we love the golfers that show up who, who, who think they're good. My best yeah, position here is driving the cart. <laughs> because we've got drums going on in the middle of your backswing. <laughs> Philharmonic. Now, do you guys always come out to the golf courses and play? Pretty much every year we come to Jeff Daniels uh, thing because we really we like Jeff and the cause. Michigan leads the nation with nearly 700 public golf courses and led the nation in recent years in building new courses. It's all in the details, Detroit. Auburn Hills is home to many new high-tech buildings and businesses, and one that really stands out is the Daimler Chrysler U.S. headquarters, a true modern-day architectural marvel. We sent reporter Julia Ho to get us the details on who and what is really on top. Julia? If you drive through Auburn Hills on your way to work or take I-75 going up north, chances are you'll pass by the Daimler Chrysler World Headquarters. And you know it too, by the gigantic Pentastar logo that adorns the top. Well, did you ever stop to wonder what's behind that logo? Well, we did. So let's go take a look and get all the details. 
Well, here we are on the 15th floor of the Daimler Chrysler World Headquarters, behind the glass. Here to fill us in on all the details is Ed Sines, spokesperson for Daimler Chrysler Hi, Julia. World Headquarters. Hi. Welcome to Daimler Chrysler's Thank U.S. Headquarters. You. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about this beautiful space. This is executive offices, uh, CEO, COO, um, a couple of board members, and their associated staff. Now, come on, give us give us the, the nitty-gritty. Are, are there any wet bars or jacuzzis or no, anything? No, there, no. No? It's, no. Uh, it's, it's spacious, which is nice for, for those of us who work in, in smaller offices. But um, I think, from my impression, if you were to go in there, you'd see that it's relatively spartan. It's a good place to be in that um, we do test cars here. We do build prototype cars here. We do design and build clay models here. So the CEO is never very far from the car action. He can, uh, at his uh, window, just take a walk over to the uh, design studios or to uh, any of the labs and see what's going on and, and give his input on future product. Before working for Daimler Chrysler, did you ever wonder what was behind the Pentastar as well? I did, as a matter of fact. A guy had just gotten a job as an engineer here, and we asked him what was behind the big Pentastar, and yeah. he said it was a, he thought it was a conference room, which, as you can see, it's not. Thanks again for having Thanks us up here. Thanks a lot for stopping here. by. Really appreciate it. Thanks. So there you have it. Now you know all the details of what's behind the Pentastar. And if you ever wondered about any other details behind other closed doors, just ask. Go to our website at detailsdetroit.com. Cars, cars, and more cars. People who live here build them, and people who live here love them. Everyone knows that the Motor City drives the world, but what is the Motor City driving? Our own Ed Victor takes a look at the car store that caters to Detroit's elite, and you'll see why. No television show that chronicles Detroit would ever be complete without a car segment, right? Well, here's our car segment, but we're not talking about any cars. No, we're talking about incredible cars, exotic cars and specialty cars. And that's why we're standing in my garage. No, actually, we're actually standing in Kip Sheward Motorsports in Kego Harbor, and you must be... Kip Sheward! Hey, how did that work out? <laughs> Kip, I gotta tell you, you've got some incredible cars here. I mean, you've got Porsches and Ferraris and, and Lamborghinis and, and Cobras. Oh, I would assume you have a whole lot of repeat customers. A lot of repeat customers. Probably 90% of our business is done by repeat clients. Uh, who are some of your clients? Tim Allen, um, Lindsey Hunter, Steve Eiserman are all good clients of ours. You don't just sell cars, though. You actually design garages as well, right? We've designed a lot of garages for local folks here. If your collection is a certain type of car, we'll actually go in and design a garage around that make of car. You know, Kip, I'm, I'm kind of a car guy myself, at least I think I am, so would you mind if I sand a few of these cars? You wouldn't mind. I'll tell you what, this time we'll make an exception. Oh, well, come on. <laughs> Let's go. Mm. So, Kip, what's the story with this car? This is a Formula One car. This is a Brabham, a BT60. This is the last Formula One car produced by Brabham. It's the first Formula One car driven by Damon Hill, who was world champion. Mm. So what you're sitting in is really a piece of history also. It's tight. Steering is real tight. And don't forget, kids, always, always buckle up, especially if you're driving an F1. Mm. You know, leave it to Ferrari to put an engine under glass. Look at this. This is the 360 Modena. Quite an engine. Dual plenums. Look at this. Donatace. Very hot. The Modena. And this is uh, named after the city in Italy, where the yes. cars are from, right? Mm -hmm. This is definitely me. Now, what does something like this go for? Uh, open market value, about $205,000. About a four to six year wait to get the cars. Whoa, a Shelby Cobra, right, Kip? Yeah, Super Formance Cobra. Unbelievable, look at this. But this is a, this is a model of the original Cobra. Yes, it is, by Super Formance. Um, to replace this car with the original, you'd spend upwards of three hundred fifty dollars to $400,000. And how much would this cost us? 50000 Not bad. Whoa, beautiful. And then, now, what is this made out of? This particular car, fiberglass. They are available in aluminum, mm -hmm. but this particular one is fiberglass. Was the original aluminum? Original cars were aluminum. Now, I got all the details, but this is the car that I'm taking home. This is the Volante DB7. And Kip, how much was this car again? $100,000. But for me, $100,000. $100,000. Guys, can you write him a check? And uh, I'll just meet you out in the back. Welcome back, and we've been joined by our special guest, Herman Moore, wide receiver for the Detroit Lions. Welcome, Herman. Yeah, thanks for having me. I have to ask you, what is your opinion of the Arena Football League? Well, I haven't had an opportunity, really, to get out to any games. I've been pretty busy. 
last uh, few months. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully going pretty soon. Good. You should get out there. But you have been busy, haven't you? You've got an awful lot going on. For one thing, the Detroit Lions fans all around are so pleased to have you back for another season. I'm glad everything worked out. It was uh, an, a time there where I didn't think I was going to have an opportunity to come back. But I'm glad everything worked out and I'm able to come back and play for another season. We are too. As a, as a fan, I can tell you I'm glad. You've got a lot of other things going on too. I, I can't seem to walk through Detroit Metro Airport and smell the Cinnabons without thinking of Herman Moore. When did this happen? Uh, well, I've been working on that for about uh, eight months. Because uh, you like Cinnabons? Because I like them a lot. Uh, <laughs> I, I, had, I would always travel through Northwest, uh, the terminal, and uh, the Cinnabon, cinnamon rolls, you would smell them. And, uh, Especially uh, early in the morning. Early. Room. And oh. I always had to get one before I got to my flight. And uh, I, an opportunity came up. Uh, up for me to purchase the uh, Detroit market and uh, I've been working with the people down at uh, Cinnabon down in Atlanta where their corporate headquarters are and um it was presented to me. I had to go get a lot of training for it, and uh, it's a great partnership. Did you ever think, I mean, here you are playing football for the Detroit Lions, and did you ever think that one day you'd own Cinnabon? No, I didn't. I didn't think that would be uh, something I'd ever own. Uh, I really didn't have any idea what I would do after football or during football. A lot of players wait till their career ends before they get involved with things, but uh, for me, I wanted to take an opportunity and utilize the offseason. The off oh, it's very wise. It's a good move. It's a great company, but I don't don't think you're going to be leaving football anytime soon. At least the Detroit Lions fans hope that that's the case. So no, I plan on sticking around for a while. Good, good. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, Herman. And we should let our audience know that they're going to be seeing an awful lot more of you, aren't they, Herman? You're going to be one of our featured reporters on the show, uh, maybe getting a behind-the-scenes look at some of the more prominent sports figures here in Detroit. Yeah, I look forward to it. Uh, as, as long as the time's permitting, uh, i got a lot of things going on, but I'm I'm looking forward to going out and have an opportunity to interview a lot of the players, uh, give some insight as to what they do outside of their sport, um, and I think it's going to be something that the audience is going to be very interested in. You're going to get us the dirt. Yeah, get you all the dirt. Get you anything I can, <laughs> uh, whenever I can. It should be it should be fun. It should be a lot of fun. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. We really appreciate Thank that, you. and you're a welcome addition to the show. Thank you. And with that, we'll be right back. The Detroit Lions came to Detroit in 1934 when radio executive George Richards bought the Portsmouth, Ohio franchise for only $7,900. The Lions were Detroit's fourth professional football team. It's all in the details, Detroit. They're private, they're pricey, they're the best seats in the house. The sweet seats. Luxury suites at the Palace, Comerica Park, and the Joe. Unfortunately, many of us never get the chance to experience these rooms with a view. But if you've got a reporter, a camera, and a crew, well, you'd be surprised where you can end up. Come on, I'll give you the details. There are seats, and then there are suites. Today we're at one of my favorite venues, Joe Lewis Arena. We're here at the Miller Brewing Company Suite, and as you can see, it's a fitting tribute to our own Detroit Red Wings. Take a look at this suite full of hockey sticks, uh, Red Wings memorabilia, and something that everybody should have, a Stanley Cup cocktail table. Some suites are more traditional, and some are more modern contemporary, like this spacious suite. Beyond a great view of the action, there are some great amenities inside. In the MGM Grand Suite, you can kick back and relax. And of course, the best part about the suites, no waiting. In some suites, you never know what you might find, like a marble bar or marble floors. This is Kim Reckley, Director of Suite Sales at the Joe. So Kim, what price for all this luxury? Well, we have half suite contracts that range from sixty to five to seventy thousand a year, and full suite contracts that range from one fifteen to one sixty a year. All of our suites do have a five-year contract, but I do have to tell you, we do have about a five-year waiting list for these suites. Well, after what we've seen, it's certainly worth the wait. And don't forget, with the price of admission, every luxury suite at the Joe includes VIP parking as well. To our resident food expert, John Jonah of Merchants Fine Wine, VIP only means one thing, very important pastas. Right, John? Here's John Jonah and Just Jonah. 
Hi everybody, today we're gonna to talk about pasta and pasta cuts. What do all these different shapes mean and why are they out there? Well, there's a reason. Let me give you an example. These are soup pastas, Agnellini, Accende Pepe, and Stellini, and they're designed to cook in soups because they cook really fast. This is called Trinette because it's got little ridges and it catches the sauce. This is called Riccatoni from the Martelli family and this is made from 100% durum flour and air dried for three days which gives it the right texture. This is a porcini flavored spaghetti which is a real new trend in Italy. Wonderful cooking and gives you that al dente flavor with just a bit of olive oil and mushrooms. This is called Cavatappi and I like it because it is a curlicue and it catches the cheese. And then we have these really unusual shapes. This is called Orchietti or the belly button pasta. This is rooster's head, shaped like the rooster's coxcomb. And this right here is the most interesting of all. This is called strozza preti. And this is a pasta that has a history behind it. In the poor areas of Italy, when the priests used to come over on Sunday and demand a meal, the people used to go in the back and be so angry, they twisted the pasta. So they nicknamed it Strangle the Priest. That's the name of this pasta. I think you should go out and try new shapes, throw out the spaghetti, and try some of these unusual products and see how they work. They all have a reason and they're all fun. Mangia. Have a good time. Who knew there were so many pastas and so many meanings? Thanks, John. You know, people always talk about getting backstage, but few ever get the opportunity. Somehow, Ed Victor got backstage, and I'm pretty sure it was while no one was looking. He gives us the details. We're backstage at the Palace of Auburn Hills pre-concert, and guess what? We're in the dressing room, so let's check it out. Come on. Dressing room number one. Let's go. This is where Madonna is going to be. Madonna, Madonna. This is where we practice our dance moves before we go on stage. So this is kind of the casting couch, you know. This is where Madonna's going to be sitting very soon. Let's see if there's anything in there. Maybe we should leave her something. What do you think? Just imagine all Madonna's clothes. Bra, a lot of bras here, right? OK, and then when Britney Spears is here, she sets up a bed right here. It's not here yet, so just imagine, if you will. If you walk over here, secret passageway. Uh oh, a little sticky. That's where they go to the bathroom. Stars actually have to go to the bathroom. I can't believe it. Ah, the rock and roll shower. Plenty of room for for the whole band. All right, we better get out of here. I think I hear somebody coming. Come on. Thanks, Ed. Maybe you should audition for Madonna's next tour. I think you have the moves down. And when we come back, I'll take you on a quick tour across the Detroit River to show you what's happened to one of the area's favorite islands. We'll be right back, so stay with us for more details. The Dumochelle building was the site of the nation's first independent auto showroom. The overhead alley door, the freight elevator, and an interior turntable still remain. It allowed cars to be driven in and lifted to the second floor. It's all in the details, Detroit. Right in the middle of the Detroit River sits an island that's been everything from an Indian mission, a British military post, to an amusement park. Today, it's entered into its most recent incarnation. So put on your life jacket for the quick five-minute ferry ride from Canada's Amherstburg. If you're from the Metro Detroit area, you know that the name Pablo is synonymous with summer fun. But today, a visit to the 272-acre island is somewhat different. The French called it Bois Blanc, Island of the White Wood, because of the trees that covered it. They established a mission for the Huron Indians there in the 1700s, while aiding the British in the 1800s, Tecumseh used the island as a headquarters and the British built three blockhouses there. And during the Civil War, the island was a stop on the Underground Railway. After many private owners used it as a summer retreat, Bois Blanc was sold to the Detroit Belle Isle and Windsor Ferry Company in 1898. That company began excursions to the island. In 1949, the island was transformed into an amusement park, complete with Ferris wheel, roller coasters, a zoo, and a fun house. The name Bablo was coined because it was the locals' best try at pronouncing the difficult French name. 
Pablo continued to amuse Metro Detroiters over the next 40 plus years, but with larger, more spectacular amusement parks on the rise, in the late 1980s, Pablo's popularity waned. In 1994, Canadian John Orham bought the island and sold the rides. According to Orham, the plan was to create an island that was a green, clean, safe retreat, not too far from home. Inspired by the European cities in Canada, he wanted to create the same feel here. Orham imagines the island becoming a mini Martha's Vineyard or Mackinac Island over the next five years. 80 families are currently on the island with room for a possible 400. And Orham's plan is for the center part of the island to be reopened to the public, but with foot traffic only. Today, this is what you'll find at Bobo. Beautiful new homes, condominiums, and a comfortable yet still fun way of life. The homes there are absolutely amazing. All are Victorian style on the outside and freighters pass through your backyard every day. It's really something to see. And if you love football, here's something else to see. The Detroit Fury Arena football team. They've been drawing huge crowds to the Palace of Auburn Hills and only after their first season. Here's Julia Ho with the details. <laughs> Hey everyone, we are here at the Palace, the home of the Fury. And with us today is the general manager of the Fury, Greg Myford. Now Greg, do you know the story behind how this whole uh, arena football concept was developed? Very interesting story. The, yeah. the game's founder, Jim Foster, actually drew the game up on the back of a manila envelope at <laughs> Madison Square Garden. Uh, he was attending, uh, of all things, an all-star soccer game, indoor soccer game. Geez, if they can play soccer indoors, why can't we play football? So give us the details about the Fury. Fury is a brand new Arena Football League franchise mm -hmm. that uh, we're playing our expansion season this year. Our games are played primarily on a Friday or a Saturday night, uh, so we're finding a lot of families uh, bringing the kids out and enjoying it. At the same time, we are also finding and addressing the core football fan. Now tell me about some of the players. Where do they come from? Are they drafted from Michigan or out of state? These players come from virtually everywhere, and most of them have played at a major level. We have a number of players uh, that have come from the Canadian Football League, the XFL, and we have some players that have played in the NFL. Here we are on the field again, now this time with Robert Flash Gordon, the star player of the Fury, but also a star player, like a real Hollywood star player, right? Uh -huh. You were in Oliver Stone's movie, Any Given Sunday. Yes, I did that in Miami uh, a couple years back, and uh, it was good to be around you know, Al Pacino and uh, Cameron Diaz and uh, Timmy Fox and uh, watch Oliver Stone you know, direct. And what did you end up doing in the movie? You'll see me a uh, long touchdown, number 89. I threw a bomb right. up and danced the end zone. Give us a little demo, come on. Okay. Well, just a little, this just a little good. dancing part. I throw the bomb, and then we all... <laughs> All right, well, hey, good luck the rest of the Thank season, you. and thanks Thank a lot. You, All right. All right. Perfect. Talk about typecasting, a football player playing the part of a football player. Not a bad career if you can get it. Well, good luck to Robert Flash Gordon. When we come back, I'll take you to one of Detroit's favorite haunts for some dessert. Don't go away. The Detroit Zoological Society was founded way back in 1911. It was North America's first virtually bar-free zoo. Its moated enclosures marked it as one of the most progressive zoos in the country. It's all in the details, Detroit. Welcome back to Details Detroit. I'm your host, Karen Newman. Of all the restaurants in the downtown area, only one has the amazing distinction of being haunted. And of course, I just had to find out all the details. Come on. Detroit is filled with a rich history and incredible landmarks. One of my favorite landmarks is the Whitney Mansion for dinner and then, of course, one of their very special desserts upstairs. Oh my God, I'm not kidding. Beyond the out of this world food and the heavenly desserts, rumor has it that this mansion is haunted. John, is this true? It's supposed to be home to somewhere between three to five different spirits. Have you ever experienced any kind of a sighting or a feeling that you had company? A number of times. Actually, uh, one, the first one that comes to mind is that late at night when I was sitting at the bar right outside here, and I hadn't drank anything at the bar, and uh, there's an elevator right around the corner there, and uh, not a soul was in the building, and I heard the elevator begin, and I traveled up to the third floor, 
And I just sat there. The door opened, and not a soul came out. <laughs> At least not a soul that I could see. What'd you do? I just simply packed up my things and <laughs> left the building as quickly as I could. John, as we understand it, this place has a wonderful history. Can you give us a couple of fun facts? Oh, sure, Karen. Well, the house is 105 years old. It took four years to build built of the very hardest of stones, South Dakota Jasper, wow. carved right here on site. It's a magnificent house built for David Whitney and his wife. David was a lumber baron here in Michigan and had tracks of lumber stretching all the way to the west coast. How big is this house? 40,000 oh. square feet, about 52 roofs. Wow. 10 bathrooms. A lot of cleaning staff. I would hope so. A lot of household staff. I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Whitney didn't do it herself. I don't think so. <laughs> yes, Karen, we're very proud to have preserved this house for the city of Detroit. Thank you, John. Thanks for all the details on the Whitney Mansion, a true treasure to Detroit. I've got to tell you, John McCarthy also told me that at any given time, the temperature in that particular dining room will fluctuate 20 to 30 degrees. Plus, while we were there shooting this segment, our equipment kept going down. Ooh, scary. And that's our show. And remember, Detroit, if there's a door you want opened or a particular detail you want to know about, just ask. Hey, Details Detroit, can you go inside that tire on I-94? I'm kind of wondering what that's all about. Hey, Details Detroit, I want to know about the Detroit Windsor Tunnel. How was it built? Yeah, this is Andrea from Bloomfield Hills. I want to know what fluorine marks keeps in her refrigerator. The Weight Watchers like Yeah, does she stick to the program? Hey, Details Detroit, where did Richard Golden get his dance moves? Hey, Details Detroit, whatever happened to John Kelly and Marilyn Turner? I really love those guys. Hey, Details Detroit, I want to know about the salt lines underneath the city of Detroit. Hey, Details Detroit. How much water is in that water tower at the Detroit Zoo? Whatever you want to know about Detroit, just go to our website at www.detailsdetroit.com and ask. We'll take it from there. This is Karen Newman for Details Detroit. Thanks for watching. And remember, Detroit, it's all in the details. See you next time.